there's one. Yeah. It's been it's engaged. Call a meeting to order. Um, thank you. Minutes. You minutes. minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Who's compiling the minutes now? Terry Catwell. They're great. I mean, he does it all well for them. Yeah. Does a really good job. Yeah. yeah. I guess, well, whatever it would be in the next meeting, 
received that that comment was in response to a question? Or, uh, well, we, I think maybe you would ask the question because yeah. we were new, newer. Um, what was our role? And I guess if I saw an application, well, that's what was missing on that application. We couldn't find. Well, and I think that that had already gone through the process because I did find buried in there it said Jackson Conservation Commission declined to comment on it. Mm. I was like, well, I don't recall it ever coming to us. It did it. So. So that's why we couldn't find that form. Yeah. Be like, well, this is where we sign. It says what our, what happens if we do or don't sign accordingly. Right. So that's where that question came up, kind of vague. It was like, well, this is what it does, but. Ideally, if we had a permit to sign, if I remembered all the details, which I don't. Okay. But it, I'm fine with it. Okay. something we have discussed in the past or looking at going forward so um, I'll just turn the floor over to you for the moment I'm sure. yeah I um, initially contacted Ken to see what might be the proper approach to this thing and he said this was actually before the uh, plan for the uh, prospect farm area was brought to the town and all that kind of stuff and anyway, he advised me I should wait until it actually passes before I come and talk to you guys. And then come and get your ideas about what things, um, if, I'm, I'm trying to recruit people who would be interested in building the, the mountain bike trails. And um, I've got a number of people here in town who are interested. Um, and at any rate, um, I'd like to, find out what be, would be your concerns, if you have any idea about how we should approach it or whatever. Um, I'd like to hear them. So, it's more, I, I was hoping that you guys could tell me what concerns or issues you think would come up. I know Ken just mentioned parking, which uh, Ken had already mentioned. I've also heard that uh, there's a lot of wet areas, which I know are up there, but it's not like wet areas aren't something that right. It's gonna we run into yeah, we run into them everywhere. So, um, uh, but I also know that there seems to be a real sensitivity in town here for putting in on bike trails. And I think our emphasis would be on making sure that everybody knows this is a multi-use trail for both mountain biking and hiking, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I can't think of any other use. Not right. I guess yeah. you could. Yeah. Off road roller. Whatever. <laughs> you can do that. Yeah. More power, more power to you. Yeah, yeah there's people that are out there doing. Yeah, I know. I've seen stuff some videos. <laughs> but yeah, multi use is key. Yeah. Do you have some sort of a plan for a proposal or anything? No, because, um, for instance, I looked at the map, you know, of Prospect Farm area, and one of my first uh, ideas, just concept, was that uh, we could go up there, a couple of us, uh, like, um, uh, and 
try to pick out an area we, where we thought a trail might go. I know I've talked to uh, Andrew Drummond over here, and he suggested that we don't try to make you know to make too much of a trail network to begin with. Make a, a modest attempt. You know, maybe a, I don't know whether two miles is the right number, but maybe a single big loop or something that you would do. Mm -hmm. And um, the um, you know. Uh, I've got a couple of guys who've built a number of trails who where we could just go along and maybe just uh, mark a proposed trail and then you guys could come up there and take a look at it and say, yeah, this likes this looks like this might work. And um, one of my first things when I looked at the map was to look at the Dana Place Trail, which I don't think gets used in much anymore. Mm -hmm. But that might be an initial place to get started, you know, down there and then sort of loop around. Now the lower section is yeah not a prospect yeah. farm, right? but it's still good. It's part of the yeah. overall discussion. Yeah, mm -hmm. the majority of well, this, the naming of the trails is confusing to begin with. But as I see it, the Dana, what I call a Dana Place Trail, well, actually it forks off of the Hopkins Trail. But, right. Um, the Hopkins Trail leading down to Route 16. Branches right. There's a stone wall. I typically call that the Dana Place Trail, mm -hmm. um, but that is off of Prospect Farms land. But um, but just getting back to, I guess just the overall. Well, first off, do you, do you yourself have experience like? Within I really I have done. You know I I I'm a member of both uh, Ryan Milko and, and Nemba. Mm -hmm. And now that Jeremiah is the president, and that yeah. helps. And I mean, um, so does everybody know Jeremiah? I don't know. Jeremiah Beach. Uh, Jeremiah Beach. He, he's run the pro tune over here. Yeah, he's right. done. But he's built. Like, right. He's built trails like over there in Bartlett, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I'm sure lots of other places. Oh yeah, yeah. And, Very uh, experienced. Yeah, um, and a lot of the guys that I I sort of uh, put together this group called Old Spokes, and we had, well, on our mailing list, we have like over, I think it's 48 people on it. So, uh, not everybody rides regularly, but quite often we have 20 people or so um, mm -hmm. that are riding fairly regularly. Mm -hmm. And we're all old guys, so mm -hmm. we don't ride as fast as the young guys. <laughs> right. But, um, yeah, so there's a lot of interest there. Yeah. Um, but I would envision this being uh, is trail being used for uh, like if I bring my grandkids up and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and take them out be I would think a, we try to organize it so that it would be um, family you know really family oriented right yeah uh -huh. but we do have yeah I do have people that I was I have talked to um, uh, Corbett mm -hmm. yeah, Corbett, Corbett builds a lot of the trails over here in Conway yeah two of the and he is. He says he doesn't have the time to do it right now, mm -hmm. but he'd be willing to come and sort of survey the area and give us, a, you know, his professional opinion of right. where to run it and so forth. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of. I mean, there's a lot of trail builders, you know, professional trail builders like like, um, like Tulip Trails and um, uh, Tyrol, um, another guy in town is a trail builder. And there's Jason, Jason, uh, Hunter. Jason Hunter, right? Is Jeremiah Hawkins and all those guys, and they use two, they use two little trails as well sometimes. But yeah, there's definitely trail builders, just guys out in the Plymouth area, and guys over in Burke, move all around. Um, so that would be the kind of the idea of the concept: is it truly a machine-built trail network? Is it hand-built network? And people that don't know the difference. Typically, a hand-built trail would be more like a hiking trail, um, and machine-built trails can sometimes look like a hiking trail, but are more manicured and for different reasons. Sometimes right. to make a trail be smooth, but other times because what you need to remove for drainage or durability just is crazy to do by hand. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's a different feel just within that conversation of what people call a trail and what 
And then even within machine-built trails, there's this machine-built trail that's meant to pick lines and feel like a hiking trail. And then there's the machine-built trails that are really sort of delineating your where you should be riding on the trail because of the contours to create. It just sort of happens with more like a bobsled. That's maybe an exaggeration, but um, so within all that, you know. Right. And if you, uh, has everybody here seen any mountain bike trails? We have a lot of them in the area. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you haven't seen them, I could point you to some too, right? To yeah, I, mean, I think everybody's seen them. Maybe they don't know, but like uh, Charlie's, for example, is considered <laughs> yeah, that's a, a mountain bike trail. But to some people, that's what they want to see. And other people yeah, exactly. want to never see that. Right. So, just but then, like, uh, just what you were talking about, the hand-built trails, I mean, right. the NIMBA group sort of seems to have a more predominant yeah. feeling that they like the old-fashioned hand-built right. style type yeah. stuff, but I kind of like them both. So. Yeah, I think I think what Gorm, I think with the Coas Trail Network is, is a really nice combination of the two. I think right. it has a, a very natural feel while yeah. having some, some machine-built stuff, so yeah. I think it's a nice compromise yeah um, and then like yeah, and that in fact that's a really good example of the if you go up to Gorham in New Hampshire if you go up to Moosebrook State Park mm -hmm. the, the trails that are on in Moosebrook are would be considered um, the hand-built kind yeah. yeah okay but you go right across the street right across right. Route 2 and all right. those are right not all of them but most of them are right work about machine. Yeah, we, especially when you get up behind the airport, the old right. airport there. Yeah, yeah, the newer. And the machine built is a unique machine that's very narrow. It's a, you know, a much lower impact. It's not a full size excavator, but it's a unique machine. That's. I would say though, I mean, if we were thinking about the um, conservation issues of erosion and that kind of stuff, the machine built guys seem to be able to put in more substantial, you know, culverts or drains yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So that's yeah. one of the advantages of getting to a, a machine built. Yeah. Um, what the impact on wildlife or any type of um, species or anything like that? I think you'd have to have a little concern about that. Yeah, that could be a concern. I know, like, for instance, um, one of the trails that we ride, uh, the electric loop, which is over uh, on a, off a west side road sort of area, there's a there's a sign posted up there for uh, a uh, goshawk. You know, hey, there's a goshawk. I mean, it's probably was there, yeah, ten years ago. I don't even know if it's still nesting there or whatever. Right. But yeah, I mean, people uh, try to be uh, sensitive to the wildlife and those kind of issues. Um, I think one of the studies is that. Uh, bites are invasive to wildlife because they're so quiet, mm -hmm. and they startle. And you know, for uh, say, pregnant deer or something like that, that's not what they need. So, because mm -hmm. bites can get up on them quickly, so quick, you know. Mm -hmm. And the same with you know hikers too. I mean, or runners. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so that's one of the impacts, and the other is. Um, we can talk about this. I don't think we can approve anything here for Prospect Farm as far as cutting trails. I think that will have to go through the select. Yeah, according to the plan, that, that's what my understanding was, is that it would have to be approved by both the Conservation Commission and the selectmen, and that it, you needed to have an organization, and I'm hopeful it would be somebody like NEMBA or Ride NOCO, because mm -hmm. they're the most local, that would come in here and agree to, um, you know, maintain it over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. I think working kind of, it's several things. Yes, the Conservation Commission can't approve this alone. We can help shepherd this through to the selectmen, but I think the first goal or question the selectmen would be is that this needs to be a user supported group that all of the other uh, user groups that have been 
voted to have uses up there needed to have their own user supported group that the town does not want to be responsible for maintaining or um, building whatever infrastructure that that goes in so that that's probably like the first most important thing mm -hmm. in identifying that group just to work forward so that the town knows that it's it's serious that there's going to be time and effort put into this beyond what the Conservation Commission or the Select Board can offer. <clears throat> okay, right, and then we're, we are skipping a step, which is in the, the plan, which is, I believe we have to have a, um, a soil, or a study. a study, or at least some Yeah, of our, our, our inventory, our inventory of, we have to discuss the areas that we can't put the trail in if the proposed trail system in. Which we have not we we haven't done yet. Right, so that's the first thing that would delineate areas that can't. But within that is the possibility of a professional group proposing, well, I recognize that site and this is how we deal with that. And then so I might be like, oh, I wasn't aware that you can still manage this by doing X, Y, or Z. So there'll definitely be some, you know, in, our, in the management plan, we have just general like wildlife areas flagged. Like, we don't have any particular areas of, of interest. No, not listed. Well, we should talk to our forester too, because he'd be mm -hmm. uh, pretty good input as to what a layout would be, because you know he, he thinks about stuff like that. Yeah, long term. Yeah, it's. And would you try to be hooked up with any other trail system, or is this just a self-imposed um, system? I think it would be, initially, my intent would be just to put something in pretty modest and not be in, tied into any other trail system. Um, just that, I'm sure. thinking about the impact of more and more people going up there. I mean, I, yeah. I was originally opposed to parks and recreation, and I still am somewhat, but I, I realize that it's going to be used, and I, I think it should be. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm leery of inviting the general public in. Mm -hmm. I think in that, that document that you, you sent, that there's, that's an important first step of identifying the user group mm -hmm. and the type of trails that will be that we're thinking about doing. And I think our emphasis and the emphasis that we put through in our management plan was to prioritize multi-use trails. Mm -hmm. So I, I think not taking, putting anything on or off the table, but just having a zone that would be more like Marshall and less like the hurricane system. Yeah, that's well, certainly, I think, would be easier to put, to initiate yeah. like more Marshall-like and less hurricane for sure but just just like from the for the initial get-go like I don't think we're going to be looking at downhill only trails right right yeah I mean well, like I said I what I initially had in mind was something where I could my grandson's gonna be 11 <laughs> even though I want to right. he's not even you know he's not some 11 year olds are like super right downhill he's not that yet but yeah. that's the kind of guy I would Right, go up there, other people taking their families up there just to ride around and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Something else to do, you know. Yeah. Um, but, but I think any network that, you, that gets built there inherently ties into the other trail systems. I, I didn't want to... You mean case, right, to the, going across the cross-country trails and stuff? Well, I just didn't want, if Dick wasn't aware, I, I didn't want to be like, oh yeah, of course this trail system would be isolated, but effectively it's only isolated in the sense that you could get onto the Hall's Ledge Trail or you could right. get onto Boggy Road. You know, obviously you could be riding that, but you already can ride all of that stuff. That's all part of our initial plan. Um, there has also been discussion prior to the mountain bike idea, which was almost a you know, trying to lead into the idea of mountain biking, was the, a couple of years ago we talked about trying to get a, another trail, just a hiking or running trail that took in the perimeter of Prospect tying in some of the dead ends. 
just so you could actually have a loop out there that wasn't, you know, go to the end of the orchard, turn around, go to Hall's, <coughs> Hall's Ledge, turn around, just yeah. sort of connecting the dots. Now, yeah, well, that would definitely be Could you do that with a mountain bike? You know, maybe. But, so there has been discussion and some time spent walking areas just to see, hey, how do we get something? And obviously, a, the running trail or Happy King Trail was lower impact, and there wasn't a discussion yeah. of getting a machine in to do anything, and maybe a machine never gets in there anyway. Maybe it's just, just maybe too it much. Is. Yeah. But, um, so, I just didn't want to be like, oh yeah, these guys just drive up and they ride this two-mile circuit. A lot of people would ride up. You right. Know, or ride from someplace else. Or, you know, a popular thing now is, is really kind of, it's almost like hiking with your bike. It's connecting the dots to go get places that you can't get. So it's more, you know, the sky's a limit, but just very low impact. You're just exploring with your bike, getting places mm -hmm. and then five feet. So people aren't trapped, just locked into just driving someplace with their bike to go riding. Well, I'm not. Um, yeah, I think any particular trail would be interesting to see the multi-use versus single-use kind of depending on what it is and where it's proposed. You know, Have you been to Marshall? On foot, not on bike. <laughs> yeah, you still yeah. have uh, yeah. a rough idea, right? Yeah. Like, for instance, um, the we, we ride Marshall a lot, and there's sort of the, the faster downhill, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, trail that we always look for towards the end of our rides, but there's plenty of stuff that's like, um, these T-bone yeah. trails yeah. and stuff yeah. that are just going, you know, all over. They're really slow, you know, hardly move. Right, lots all. of turns to keep your Lots of turns, trapped. there's lots of roots in the way and rocks. It's, you know, it probably be, it wouldn't even be a really comfortable um, hiking trail, but yet the bikes can do it, so. Right. And that's Conway Conservation Commission, right? Yeah, yeah. we're in town of Conway. And does that hook up with anything else, or is it all self-contained? Well, it, we we hook it up by going down some of the fire roads, you know, um, 379 and that kind of stuff. There's some old trails. Uh, one of them is called the um, high school loop that we will take, and we ride up to that. And another one called Tent Boulder. This is an old trail that uh, goes up and then comes back down into the fire roads. And these were all, I, in my mind, I'm assuming they were all old hiking trails, but they were yeah. biking trails. You know? I, don't I don't know that. I don't know the history about, enough, but yeah, there's semi illegal mountain bike trails that were adapted, uh, yeah. but the paths did exist, they just weren't like yeah. they, I mean, 15. Uh, yeah, there was a big push like 15 years ago. Yeah, the, no. the National Forest just they blast all of the illegal development. Yeah, they closed it. Every trail that we're talking about was. You can't ride this anymore because the trail sort of did exist, but it got turned into a mountain bike trail. And mountain bikers were maintaining them and improving them. And they just said, like, we've had it. Like, unless you're going to present something to us, we're shutting down all this. Mm -hmm. So they did for a couple of years, and they just left open, like, Boulder Loop and shut down a bunch of the other ones. Like, you couldn't do Ted Boulder. That was, that was eliminated. Some of the lower stuff they let us continue to ride, but um, a person in town who doesn't live here anymore basically just stepped up and was like, "Challenge accepted. Like, we'll we'll do this legally." You are you talking about Rob? No, Mark. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mark Jenks. Yeah, well, he they were. Yeah, it was way back then. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that was kind of the beginning of this legal. Mountain bike trails. Well, see, I didn't people. even know that uh, trails like, because I, I don't see a sign up there, I don't see anything that says you can't ride a tent pole. Or, or well, because you can now, but oh, it, you can. It, for years it was. Okay. Yeah, that was one of the ones that they were like. Maybe. And I know that uh, Nembo was dealing with, they were trying to get another trail in that I, my understanding is, you know, where the shooter's park is, somewhere around there. So the high school loop, mm. you know, where it comes back, you know, yeah. we always ride it down here. Yeah, yeah. And they were going to try to get something that crossed up so you wouldn't have to ride up the, um, so you wouldn't have to ride up the fire road. Yeah. But they, 
they, uh, I don't think they were opposed to the idea, they just didn't want to do it this year. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's good people in place in the, in the Forest Service and uh, yeah. right now that are much more pro mountain biking than it used to be. Right. Yes. Yeah. Just say mountain biker like shepherded that through the Forest Service. Yeah, it was rough. Yeah. It, so everybody went illegal. They're like, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> can't stop all of it. Right. But I mean, uh, Nembo, I think, has um, adjusted their procedures so that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they're making progress, so it's yeah. worth it's worth sticking to the plan. Right. But so coming back to Jackson, um, I've been pushing for it for twenty five years, but there's always been a lot of resistance. I know. I had hoped for it. I had hoped for uh, the um, somewhat like Kingdom, you know, mm -hmm. where the trails, the mountain bike trails and the cross country trails are used. You know, the cross country trails in the winter and, right. and mountain biking during the summer. But everybody claims that, well, it's going to be landowners are going to complain and they won't let you do it. And I was on the board for a little while and I said, well, can we just ask the, the landowners? Nope, can't even do that. You know, they were worried about, yeah. you know, I've pushback. Not to I mean, Dick, you've, you've known what it's like. I think a lot of that was based on someone else's idea, and he was able to manage that to the point that everybody just felt that's how everybody feels. Yeah. But I know several people that I know several owners who have said, I've never felt that way. It's just how it's been explained. Yeah. So it's almost like the threat of something changing was enough that no one wanted to be the person to ask. Right. It's like, well, what if, it, what if I'm the one? Yeah. And it might be too extensive for Jackson right now, yeah. but yeah, I think just in the Prospect Farm, if we keep it, you know, small and, you yeah. know, like family oriented, multi-use and, you know, runners can do it, and yeah. that would be, that would be what I'd be I think for. I think that we hear it a lot, just in other areas too, not just through the board, but People use the Kingdom Trails as a as this, that's the point you try to create. But the Kingdom Trails soils and and contours are so unique that that's why they can create what they can create there and keep it sustainable. Jackson is wet, rocky, almost no loam. Um, it's really tough to create any trail that would look like what those guys can do and keep it maintained. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about it from, I, I, I'm pretty sure I don't know nearly as much as you guys do, but about, you know, those good kinds of issues. But I was just thinking about it at, for the community. You yeah. Know, if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to help out the community in terms of revenue and stuff, the bikers that come in are going to spend yeah. money and, you know, it's, it's, I think it would be good for the town, but maybe yeah. not everybody agrees with that. Well, know. selfishly, I don't want people to come here, but <laughs> I really want to trail. I've heard that. I've heard that down <laughs> in Conway too, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think connecting the trail system so it makes sense, so that where people in the summer don't get in a car to drive to go walk someplace else when there's this huge network of cross country trails that some of them just need a couple rocks put in a couple smart places. I mean, it's all there. Yeah. But and you can is it mountain bikeable? Yeah. So, but I think that it depends on how good a mountain biker you are, too. or just what you consider, you know, yeah. ruining a trail or not ruining a trail, or just it's a limited window here. It's a really small window of time, and I think that the trails, as they are, can really sustain any type of population of cyclists. I mean, I go out. I'm on these trails all the time, running, hiking, biking, whatever it is. And in the last, say, four years since. Maybe gravel bikes have become more popular throughout, and people. I'm amazed at the mountain, at the tire tracks I see in places that are just stupid. It's mm. just bad judgment. It's like, come on, really? Like you rode through this? It's like, sure, I came through here too, but I carried my bike because I don't want anyone to know that somebody would actually ride their bike through that. And once that starts happening, you just. And it's only typically because I always thought it would be me. People knew I was the guy riding a bike a lot, so. Got it. Yeah. I just sort of like, hey, if I want to be able to continue to do this, I need to be really smart and make sure that I'm not leaving tire tracks. Yeah. And in the last four or five years, I'm like, like, you're 
really should, probably shouldn't be writing this yet, but they are. So it's it's tricky. Yeah, it is. But I mean, um, I would certainly have in mind that uh, it would be a cooperative thing. You know, we mm -hmm. would, you know, if there were areas that were sensitive, we either build bridges or do whatever we, whatever it took yeah. to make it more sustainable, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying that I think that's why there is the resistance okay. here more than, say, someplace else, is that the terrain is difficult, it is mm -hmm. muddy, and the impact is very noticeable. It doesn't take much for someone's like, well, like, look at this. Um, I know that part of the pushback like, behind Echo Lake, part in there, was trail erosion. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a big uh, yeah. issue. And I think the Forest Service came in and shut down parts of it. Yeah. I don't know if they did the whole thing, but... Yeah. Uh, it's really quick to have overuse on that way, yeah. so it's, it's, it's tricky. Um, but, I, again, I think that the town of Jackson, like the area, maybe not even just the area that's part of the Conservation Commission that we manage, there are other large pieces of land that would be really awesome not biking that aren't wet, that aren't steep, that don't deserve, don't present those problems, you know. So it's like the big picture I think is what I'm after and prospect to maybe be one of the first. I pieces. know that um, is it Saco Valley uh, Land Trust has got the Dundee project, right? Correct. And so I don't know whether anybody's proposed now. It's it's on the it's one of the users. It's one of the uses, but I don't think anything's been proposed yet. Right. right. No, there's no locations, but it's it's, kind of it's, out, it's one of the yeah. Yeah. set of eight items. Yeah, and they have I think within it they have different zones that might be for different activities, recreational yeah. activities. And I think with the initial one that the mountain biking further away, mm -hmm. then can conceivably connect. I mean, we definitely throw a yeah. Really quick mental map of connecting a bunch of stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But I think part of that is the backside of Tyrol, mm -hmm. uh, the backside of Tin Mountain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there is quite a whole oh, yeah. area out there. Yeah. I mean, we're, this is an amazing, it's an amazing place. There's a lot of potential. There's a lot of, open the door. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm Feel silly to say it because I do it, but I'm like Jackson yeah. Falls. I mean, that's exactly. The, I sometimes go like just a. I'm pretty really happy with my subpar terrain that no one rides. <laughs> so invite the, uh, the, pop, you know, the general population in, and you've got a problem. I yeah. mean, we're trying to you know, yeah. deal with it, but it's when it first hit us, it was you know the dirty diapers and beer yeah. cans, and I think that's calmed down. Yeah. Well, even the people who build a lot of the trails on a hurricane go running, try to go find places to ride elsewhere because it's busy, you yeah. know. So it's you, you know that's the next thing. Or the trail already we built one year ago is already eroding because it's become so popular. So it's 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 tricky, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's why trails, we have to think it out ahead of time as best we can. I mean, that's the best thing we can do is try to, you know, foresee what the problems are. Yes, it's going to be a good thing. And if we can just kind of corral it, uh, we'll be in good shape. And can you use part of the existing trail for part of your two-mile loop? Exactly, you would. I mean, yeah. that would be my intention. Mm -hmm. That would be sort of, in my vision, that would be sort of the backbone, like everything feeding out. I guess just to kind of keep us on task. Um, the, the other thing that I, I'm sure Ken would bring up is that parking is extremely limited there, and there, the lot that, that is on Valentine, Valentine Landing is not technically summer parking, it's winter only. But I imagine if there were a user group that could go and take a uh, proposal to the Ballantyne to see about extending a parking lease there, or just having approved parking, because that is not town property. Mm -hmm. So yes. the 
the number of cars that are at the current lot is it, it's a six car yeah something like that. yeah six car lot and we'll be expanding that possibly in the future but like any any you know, any added use or congestion because that's the towns one of the towns in our survey when we did it is worry about congestion so any added use there but if we can show that that you know that Valentine is on board with that or using I know that bikes are slightly easier in that sense that you know you're out you're on the machine already riding at that added quarter of a mile to right is is nothing so I mean like parking at Valentine's to get in the hospital right isn't there a parking area on Carver Notch? Yes, mm -hmm. at uh, Mountainside. Yeah, and then you could do that. Biking in, you, you know, that's that. ideal for yeah. biking. Right. right. And yeah. there's it's ideal. Part of the mountain trail. <laughs> yeah, but that's also not winter, summer. Summer parking. So is that, that Jackson's? Oh, is that right? Yeah. So both, also, both of those are contractor yeah. by Jackson's Key Tour. So. I didn't know about the mountain. So that we don't have control over any yeah. of the parking there. But that's so. something that could be. One thing, uh, Ken, I, maybe I heard it through Ken, maybe I didn't, but uh, there would have been some speculation that maybe the stump dump would be converted right. into some kind that's of parking. Yeah. yeah. That was the expansion he was referencing. Oh, okay. So, so that's not going to add a whole lot of parking. But yeah, that. Wouldn't you have to move the gate to? Yeah. yeah. So it'll, the gate will move to the existing uh, property line. Um, and the stump don't close, but that's still only going to add four to six yeah, more right. spots. So right. I, I feel like that's sort of the existing parking need will fill those spots on a busy summer weekend. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, you might have a better feel for this than me because it sounds like you do even more than I do, but um, I'm thinking this is going to be. So, you know, if it's just a single poop and it's mm -hmm. maybe two miles long or right. something, yeah, it's yeah. not going to, like, attract a huge No, crowd. no, I, I, I agree. I just think that we'd be, you know, potentially looking at making, that's just the first step, you know. Sure. Obviously, people would be trying to link other things to other things, which is, I think, in, is how it should be. Yeah. Have, and, you ever, have you ever been to the Bethel Village Trails? Yes. So, I mean, these are trails that, you know, you're coming along practically right off of the golf course. Right. In fact, you go a little bit through the golf course yeah. to get yeah. onto it, right? And it's a very limited area, probably smaller, I would guess, quite a bit smaller than Prospect. Yeah. And um, it's, it's easily maintained. And you know, I, over the years that I've been going there, it doesn't look like it's... You know, suffered any kind of real damage, and you don't you don't find when we go there, we don't find huge crowds, yeah. right? A few people, and that's it. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. pretty excited. That's a good, that's a good example. I think it can be done. We just have to be prepared for all the worst case scenarios because that's in the end what we end up dealing with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like not common sense half the time. You're like, oh, really? That's and it, I would I would point one other thing out. I don't I. I uh, I used to ride out of the Red Jersey when it was down there in Glen, right? Mm -hmm. Probably is back, back in what you were referring yeah. to. And Peter Minich used to lead us on trails over there and there's a Rob Brook all the time. Oh, yeah. In fact, they just made a big ride over that way. Yeah. And those trails, they were old hiking trails and yeah. stuff that we would go on. They're all totally overgrown. They're yeah. all back to nature. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like Right. You know, some yeah. of these, if you don't use it, you, you know, you're going to get no use at it. Yeah. It's just well, kind of, yeah, I could, it's yeah. like it goes between one extreme and the other. Yeah, I, we were riding mountain bike, the blue trail system in Connecticut in the late, mid to late 80s. And that stuff was completely overgrown. No one ever went on it. Mountain bikers began opening up this, these old trails that were cut in the 30s, I think. And for probably four or five years, we were successfully expanding this network. I think I had moved away and moved up here, but we were starting to get thrown off them. By the time it was all said and done, the mountain bikers were thrown off of all the trails, that whole network, and it was for hikers again, because they were quote unquote hiking trails, but no one hiked them because they weren't maintained. Yeah. And so the mountain bikers brought them into use and yeah. got removed. 
Yeah. And now they've kind of come around and there's yeah. bits and pieces, but that's kind of what can happen. You're yeah. right. It's like, but there's the balancing act. Of it's, yeah. But I mean, it's not like, from my perspective, not knowing all the ecological impact on these things, it looks to me like they just revert back very, very quickly to nature. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mother Earth always yeah. takes back. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think what I'm hearing is like it's the same thing as always up there. Parking, is it going to erode? And is it, and is, how is it going to play with all the other uses? Yeah. In the big picture. You know, because you picture a busy day there right now, there's a couple people out on long hikes whose cars don't move. There's a whole bunch of dog walkers who come and go pretty quickly. A couple people doing maybe more of like an hour hike to yeah. get up to the view hall's bench. Yeah. You know, but I mean, it's those three general things that we always yeah, talk exactly. about that would have to be addressed. Um, yeah. And the, I guess, sorry, one thing I was thinking of when you mentioned using the existing road network as the backbone of it, the town currently puts no money into maintaining that. Like, it's, you know, kind of magic that the, the roads are not eroding. And whenever there's a logic <laughs> logging project, usually the natural forest improves the logging road to the new logging, logging project. So effectively, logging is paying for the, mm -hmm. the, what we think of as the road maintenance. Mm -hmm. So if a a mountain biking trail went in on a road and started to change like the use of one of the roads that's something to consider not just like maintaining the new sections of trail but like if we change the use of the existing trails how would we if, if that would cause added maintenance that doesn't currently exist yeah I, I guess the my last piece potentially is kind of like what Mike was saying that some of the best maintained trails even if they're not used for mountain biking it's not about mountain bikers because it's such a part of your culture of riding is building and maintaining trails. So it's like even roads, old culverts, it's always, you never want to see the trail get trashed because it, it's not like hiking where you walk over something. It's like, oh, this isn't a big deal. On a bike, your whole flow is ruined. You know, it's just, it changes the whole field of the ride if something is washed out, if this turns wet, if that culvert got backed up and now it's you know eroded or there's a, you know ditch yeah. so it's that is the you people don't always think of that they think oh mountain biking heavy use on the trails heavy use on the on the soils but mountain bikers typically don't want to ride on crummy trails so it's the maintenance and the preventative work is typically done so that it stays in that nice, it's kind of like skiing. It's like, well, you groom the Nordic trails so they continue to feel good. Well, that's sort of what happens with mountain biking, is in the end, you're almost grooming this surface to keep it so it doesn't wash out. So that it's an enjoyable yeah, experience. Organizations like NEMBA and I'm sure Ryan Nuko also are, you know, um, they'll have trail building days, you know, as opposed to just a big project, they'll have just it's trail maintenance. And um, the other thing is, I know that when we're out on a ride, you carry a saw, you know, and if a right. tree fell over and crossed the trail, you're trying to clean that up and so forth. So, yeah, that wouldn't get done if they weren't being used. And if you're just a runner, you're probably not going to be doing right. it. Typically, they don't. Because yeah. it's easy enough to get it out of your way. Yeah. You just duck. Yeah. So. Do you have anything else you want to add? Okay. So well, I mean, on our end, there are things that we're in the process of doing, which is identifying uh, wildlife areas that may need to be flagged out of bounds and identifying soil areas. But I think this is something we're interested in kind of pursuing. We're, we're looking at or trying to generate a little bit more grassroots traction with if, if we can see that, I guess. So, <clears throat> would you like me to? I mean, I, I, I think my one of my next steps would be to go to talk to Emma and see if I can get them to come over here. And I mean, it, I just see it as an iterative process. We come in, we talk to you, find out what you found out or what we can do on our end, and yeah. so forth. Well, I talk to Jeremiah every. Yes, yeah. we get it. Or if we can go tromp around in the yeah. woods we've already, sometime. Yeah. So we've, yeah, we've just they've, we've walked some areas and Jeremiah I think it was with or maybe it was part of a conversation in the past, but yeah. I would say yeah, talk to Jeremiah or Namba yeah. Center and Well he is president now, yeah, so yeah. I mean of the local chapter. Right. And 
within them is the other people that work right. in and outside of NEMBA. Um, some people don't want to be affiliated with any groups, and they're the ones building the best trails, but they still do it under yeah, NEMBA. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I think just I'd be, I'd be happy to go out and walk through an area. I mean, I, I have areas in my mind that are on prospect land already. Would, would um, I don't know whether this makes sense or not, but would whoever would want to, maybe you should do it, or I mean, somebody from the board here, but could we go and like, you know, just uh, a lot of times when I'm going through my property and I want to mark off a, a trail or something I want to build on my own land, mm -hmm. I'll just take uh, like um, plastic marker tape mm -hmm. and just put that like on a tree limb or something like that. Yeah. Would that be I mean, that might be a little premature. That sets off people's like, alarm bells. Yeah. I, okay. I would, yeah. I and mean, then we'll just find zones for now. And okay. Because okay. you can do it with your phone. Yeah. You know, you could just effectively have your phone working and then just All right. what's up. Got it. Forget what the button is. It Got flags it. a little thing. Not that message yeah. received. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. there's other ways, right? Yeah. That everybody could have the same. And yeah. You know. Playing with Google Earth, looking at that. That's a good. What's that? Google Earth. Oh, okay. Yep. Of using that. I mean, there's a draw function on that that you can kind of identify features and then transfer that to your phone and walk the land or okay. do it vice versa. And yeah. Kind of build different. up a map of things that as a tool just to kind of communicate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, so you can probably share those things. Then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. The Gaia one is, I think that's how you say it. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. That is really good. Yeah, because I imagine eventually, you know, like you're going to need a product that you can show to someone who's never going to go it, and you're going to have to have like the map and you the need a plan, and, yeah. And, yeah, and then yeah. project plan, plan, the whole thing, right? Yeah. 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 So like just that. getting like the simple map of the maybe this, maybe that, maybe this. Right. You can do the simple yeah, I get baby yeah. steps. Yeah. And that that document that you sent through, that I, I forwarded. Yeah. The demo one. Through yeah, that that had some very good planning tools of of like start to finish mm -hmm. identifying things so we can keep kind of keep the ball rolling. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you very much. You um reach out to Jeremiah just with you got that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well I, I figured it wait he's not open until when Thursday. 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 Yeah. I'll talk okay. to him. Yeah. I'll, I'm sure I have to talk to him tomorrow. Okay. Just get the ball rolling. Super. Cool. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Nice to meet you. Okay. Um, Jackson Falls. Uh, I just I just walked down there. Some couple things jumped out at me. The the lower picnic table is falling apart. It's, it's down to one rail on it, so. I don't know if that needs to be retired or. Um, no, I was always it seemed a mystery as to where they came from. Yeah. You know, was that the town once upon a time? Like some, you know. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, oh. Sure, no. <laughs> I have no time. idea. Right. Similar yeah. with the one at the end. I think we had talked a little bit about. But it'd about be local. better to get it out of there before somebody gets hurt. Yeah. I think we had talked a little bit about when the picnic tables die that maybe we talk about whether or not you want to replace them or not. That's something to talk about. Uh, that's the that's the uh, the two opposing views of like all of our stuff at the falls. Well I mean it would probably take five minutes with a hammer to the get table. it into make it go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say put it back together, but you're saying nope. <laughs> well, no, that's, that's, that's a half day to put it back together. Yeah. It's been a lot of material. That's volunteer time on a half day. Yeah, I think if it's not safe, we should get rid of it. I definitely think we, you know, whether it stays or goes in the big picture, I think both, there's good arguments for both. Yeah. The, the view of it staying or having a picnic table, the, the downside is that's where we see the erosion. Oftentimes, and that's where people just stay, a, which is yeah. not a bad thing. I mean, it's just a bunch of wood chips right now because of the picnic table. Right. Yeah, and that's why we wood chip that area so heavily because it gets trashed. 
It seems silly to have a waterfall in a spot like that and not have a spot to sit and enjoy it once you've seen that that's an option, but I'm not, I don't go and sit there, but. I have, I definitely have family members who are like, aren't gonna go sit on the falls to eat their sandwich. And yeah, I mean, I, table and, I agree, you know, it's nice. But in the same way, I could see the argument the other way. And the kiosk? I talked to the builder, he said, I guess it was last, in this coming week or the following, he'll have it installed. Oh, that's great. So, um, and also, I received the uh, lath material that came. Oh, the? Yeah, the uh, GeoCell. Mm. I think they shipped us twice as much as we ordered. They come twice? Is that what it is? I think that's what it was. I haven't broken the bundles apart, but I can estimate we needed three. I ordered four, and I think eight came, so. <laughs> I haven't, I have, they're, they're very large bundles, so I haven't like broken them up that part yet, but I, I think that's the case. I was looking at the falls at the upper part where they want to put the path into the porta potty. Mm -hmm. There's like, I think there's big rocks in there. There's, that's going to be tricky. And we haven't really talked to the town about reserving a place for 10 minute handicap parking because there's only supposed to be three spots up there. Yeah. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. I don't understand that either. I was going before. Well, where did that come from? I think that was no, just Ken. Yeah. And, and the town's already, you know, it's been so specific you now saying this is resident property. So I don't know the. When, sure. when would a person with. I think I was there or a Long Valley Cross. Like having yeah, something. but when would a person with, with um, handicapped plates pulled over get in trouble for using the bathroom there? I mean, I just don't. I just couldn't. Yeah. I didn't know if I missed part of another conversation. I was like, well, where did this, where did this come from? That? I know. I, I don't think just adding an extra spot is necessarily possible. I don't know. I still liked Ken, Ken's idea of doing it around Valley Cross and just, you know, approaching it from the back end if they wanted to. But. I just feel like that spot. Uh, I don't know. I think your point is good. I guess the problem is that is if you've got three residents who are in that parking space and a resident and a handicapped person wanted to use that porta potty, they wouldn't be able to because you know, there's no reserved space like there is down at the at the handicapped parking area. Um. I, yeah, I, I don't know. That's why I was trying to say we'll put the porta potty, the handicapped, and all the other people down at the lower end. <laughs> but that didn't go over well. So. No, I think it's in a good. I think it's in the best spot it can be. Um, yeah. I, I, the other thing, this, uh, two of the selectmen have reached out I and mean, they of asking about signage there about if we were changing. The, I don't think this. Yeah. Um, he said I would bring it up, but I don't think there's anything that we have. Plan on changing there. The only discussion we've had is just the no parking signs. Well, no, I think Ken or has, that 15 has, minute. has asked about changing the type of sign to a sign that's like Jackson's key torch. I think if that's right, an aesthetic question, but not changing the we because the selectman wanted to update the sign to reflect the policy change and resident versus permit mm -hmm. and parking and I, I guess I told them that that was their deal we don't yeah. wouldn't right. it still be permitted parking though because you have the other permits still to park there but now it's just opened up to more people that can yeah. get the permit yeah I, oh, I, I don't know it, that was outside of the scope of our discussion we hadn't discussed that that our, our main concern was the aesthetics of the no parking signs along there and if we could update those to be a more pleasant um i did talk to eastern green they replaced that rail mm -hmm. okay. thanks on for the fence mm -hmm. so that's taken care of um i guess when i have if we want to schedule a work day to try to do those mats or if we can get 
a heads up on wood chips again. Yeah, we lost Ryder for a while. Okay. okay. Get him through. Uh, Emerald. Okay. I just get. Well, Ryman could have dropped him so long ago that I was like, wherever he puts them, you need to be. Usually, when I have that happen, someone complains and says, like, well, they can't be here. We move like, really well. Sometimes we move them really fast, though. Yeah, but this, he had to do it before June yeah. 1st. So it's like, he asked me about the spots, and I was like, I'm, unless someone just signs off and says, yeah, you can put them right here, and we're all happy, it always creates someone's disappointment. And um, so I think having a date and getting them scheduled closer to when we're moving them is better. Yeah. It'd be great if we could have a big pile and store them there just, just to have you know, like this idea of always every year, like, oh, what's that? Because there is that spot where we always get them dumped, and it's at the side of the handicapped parking spot, and it's not in anybody's way. Mm, I think it ends up being in the fire safe, isn't it? In the fire lane? It's the handicapped. Oh, so like higher, higher where the sod was? It's in the middle of the falls. Mm -hmm. And that's where we always get them dropped. Well, we've and done both. Yeah. The lower and the middle. But, I mean... But like, you definitely leave them there. And it wouldn't be aesthetically pleasing, but you could leave it there. Because it doesn't block the trail. It doesn't block the perfect people from parking. Or off of the top of the Valley, Valley Cross, Cross yeah, would be a, probably the easiest. And then right. it's the easiest to move them. All that, you know. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, if we were to keep a bulk load just to say, hey, instead of being like, what about this week? Yeah. It's like, hey, when can you do it? Well, here's the spot. Yeah. And yes, mm -hmm. in two weeks we're going to be dumped, we're going to be working down here. If we could get a load dumped down here, but at least that way you have it. Mm -hmm. It's already there. Worst case scenario, it's like, well, we can't get the wood chips for a month, but we already have a store of them. Wow. Yeah, I would say if we can get them, like have them done at the top there, that seems, I don't know if like long term, because when they, they're going to be in the way when the bridge is mm, under right. construction. Um, well, let's discuss that further. We'll just, we'll but you could always get them from the fall side, so even if they close the road, because I'm sure, assuming they dump them off the, onto the... Right, I just, I just imagine that that... Both sides is gonna be. Yeah. It's gonna be blocked off. It's it's gonna be yeah. hard to access. Mm -hmm. So, just as a long term thing, to have them there for maintenance issues. Um. So I, I guess I'll notify you guys when it's going in the kiosk and if we want to have a mini work day, so we can. I don't know how much of a heads up I'm going to get from him. Mm -hmm. No, I'd be. And if the, say, can we just make that picnic table disappear? And it seems to be Yeah. Because you know people will be, and that's okay. People get to express their opinions. Dick, what do you think? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> He's hoping one of us just makes it disappear. To say that we can us. Yeah. You can all say it wasn't I. I want to shut the whole place down. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a good one. Yeah. Thank you, Dick. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I, I think it's progressing. Um, well, I'm happy about the kiosk because I've had some push on that. When is it? When is it? And. Uh, because I think that's going to be really important as far as the signage. Hopefully, routed signs will kind of integrate better with the, the, the I don't think we're changing the intent of anything. No. No. We're just changing the signage. Yeah. Correct. Um, And I'll have to see the rolled out walkways. <laughs> I'll be waiting in the yeah. paper. Yeah. There's one other thing I don't know come to me. Um, Grazing? Grazing? Is that a tree? 
I didn't get any. I, mean, I know the kids did, did the walk. Okay. No one complained to me about the tree. All right. Actually, they most people I said, I don't remember seeing it. I was like, of course you did. It was right. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I remember we stepped over. <laughs> The, the lattice on the bridge, there's like a wood lattice work mm -hmm. that I think is it's falling strong. apart. <laughs> I noticed that. They should, I got in trouble for this last time, but they should have just used like one inch, you know, fencing. Or one inch, or not one inch, but like two by four, whatever it is. That would be a lot oh, of sense. Oh, you mean up at, on the bridge? Yeah, the, the, the green bridge. I was trying to visualize here. Is it? <laughs> so you're, saying, you're saying the green bridge, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Valley Cross Bridge, but yeah, the is pretty bad. I guess that's low on my priorities. Is there community garden? Oh, community garden, we're close. Um, basically, we got the materials delivered to the highway department. Gary told me he's building them this week. Um, we got the you know the funds for that approved by the town. I was in contact with um, the compost cars last mm -hmm. week and he's going to send an invoice over and he can deliver it anytime so we've got a cone out there that gary put out there for mm -hmm. where we're going to put the soil mm -hmm. so hopefully um things will start coming together um that's on the constructed end of it and i still have to order the fencing materials i'm kind of doing things as we go along so there's going to be some additional costs over the two thousand um, dollars and then from the administrative part i had one of the guys who's been helping, a volunteer who wants a plot there, is asking, I want to be one of the first ones to deliver my application. Where do I get, where do I get my check and my application? And I spoke with Lyke in last week, and she said she was willing to take the applications and the checks in. And then we could pick them up from, that, you know, from the library and you know, give the checks to the town, and they would deposit them, and then we could use them. So we're making progress. Good. Mm -hmm. The requests are just coming from the original list of people that yeah. signed up. Yeah, because we have to put more information out there. In other words, we have a certain number of people that have already expressed an interest to, you know, from the beginning. And then we figured once we know who those are, we can open it up. We have seven beds. Um, we've got like maybe four people, four or five people then. Mm -hmm. Not quite sure because the library gets one. Um, Cool. Yeah. I saw the UNH soil test. Wasn't that funny? Yeah, it's, <laughs> they, it's, it's expansive. But again, I mean, you're going to be testing the soil that you create. But you can see it's deficient in everything. Oh yeah. Majorly, but yeah, yeah you can't oh, test no. for PFAS or anything like that. <laughs> you can't you can't test the soils, the organic soils you're getting from Maine that are PFAS because that's what we're getting. All they can tell you is, yep, these are organic. But who knows if they have the PFAS on them? Mm. But I guess. Mm. So we're making progress. I expect we should be up and running, you know, within the next couple of weeks. Cool. That's what I would think. Because you don't need fencing to stick tomato plants in. No. <laughs> no, just keep people out. Yeah. People pick their mm. Yeah. Well, and they, won't, tomato. they won't be picking the green ones. We'll get the fence up before. Yeah. <laughs> Has Lycan generated interest from her sign? Or? She said yes, she had one person who didn't know that we, that we were doing it. I guess if you didn't see the one sign that we put out, you know, the one I'll call on the e-news to express an interest, that's the one time we put it out there. And the rest of the time is just in the conservation minutes or in the selectman's minutes after last week, because we mm -hmm. got approved, I think it was last week. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I guess, and Lycan wanted to put more of the, um, more information out there on her website. So okay. I was thinking once we knew who we wanted, we could just open it up and see who was interested mm -hmm. at that point. Just put it out there and see if more people are like, oh, it's ready. I can go and pay my 50 bucks or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, you know. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, so we, have, we have water. Um, they've approved that. We just get to use the the spigot over there and put a Y splitter on it. Um, we'll have to get some hosing material on a Y splitter and maybe one of those stand up. Gary Spears suggested a stand up mm -hmm. um, thing, a spigot at the garden. Mm -hmm. um, so 
few extra additional costs, but we'll be getting money in from, you know, the gardeners for a little bit of money. Yeah. It's from this little new stuff. Um, did the, you brought this or in my email about this? Did they have the? Did the select board have any preference on funds being held? Like who would be holding funds that they would just be coming back to the town to go into general funds? Well, I think uh, you know I'll, I'll get more specific with them, but I think the idea is they didn't want to handle the administrative part. Like they didn't want to get the applications. They didn't want to have to tell people that you know that they've got a plot and all that. But I think they were willing to hold the money because I'd rather the town held the money than us trying to open up a bank account. I'm using somebody's social security number. I mean, that's never a good thing. So I think the town's willing to do that and maybe put it into a separate category. So, because we'll, we would need to, you know, those funds would be earmarked for the government. Yes, I think they can just earmark it. Yeah. Right. It goes into the general bank account. But it has its own little column. But it has its own, uh, Yeah. Uh, accounting. So, okay. So, so I, I think we can do it and keep a whole, you know, keep our... And keep it simple for the town, because, you know, they do a lot that they do. Okay. Um, but it's pretty low key. Yes. Yeah. You know? Should be. But we do need, you know, some... I think that the soil was like 11.30. That's, um, you know, and then the other materials were... What were they done? Do you remember? They were like 9. 9. Yeah, so we're already over, we'll be over our 2,000. And then we still have to get the fencing, which is like 500, and get the, the gates, which are another, you know, a couple hundred bucks. So I think I had figured it would be about 3,000. But some prices go up, some go down. Hard to say exactly. And does it make sense to get six foot sticks and a five foot fence? Does that make sense? No, I don't think that's tall enough. I don't think that's strong enough to want to put in the ground. Have you ever stuck a shovel out there? It's going to be hard to stick well, anything in that yeah, ground. Yeah, but it doesn't. <laughs> Shear doesn't care. Shear. The leverage doesn't matter if you have hard soil. Well, you mean if it's a deer or. Well, if you have a five foot, something five feet tall, that yeah. doesn't matter what your soil is. It wants to break, you're creating a lever. You know, Do you so. have a fence at your right? No, but I have massive problems. You do or you don't? I do sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a fence I can take up, pick up and down. Mm -hmm. It's always an issue. Well, I think it'll start with a five foot or maybe hang some yeah. family things on it. I'm just saying, if you're putting a wooden stake in the ground. Well, these aren't wood; these are metal stakes. Oh, metal. Yeah. yeah. But does that make sense? I don't know if the foot goes down below the ground and the five foot sticks out. I don't know. Yeah, this is like a typical garden stake, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a foot ish. Yeah, yeah, it's in the bottom. Okay. Get the stake powder. So then down. a six foot stake for a five foot fence makes sense. Yeah. It's a metal fence. It's a one inch mesh. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Galvanized. You can see how that goes. So. Yeah. Okay. Some tough soil. I'm sorry, what? Tough soil. Oh my god. That was what so I was hard. saying, if you don't get it in the ground, if there isn't enough stake in the ground and you have something five feet tall, it's very easy to just want to pull. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see. What were we calling it? The co oh, garden coordinator. Right. I guess you are the de facto garden coordinator. Sure. I have no problem doing that. Okay. Until somebody else wants to do it. Okay. I second that. <laughs> okay. And we, I, the minutes don't show that we, t I feel like we, we took a vote to author for you to authorize beyond what the grant mm -hmm. allowed, but I, I, I guess I feel like we should just have that formalized that we've had a vote that we're going to spend beyond what the Pequocket grant left and to be authorized out of our budget. So, I thought we voted that. I felt like we did too, but it wasn't in the minutes, mm -hmm. and so I just wanted to have it reflected in the minutes that we've done that, so. Yeah, I almost feel like we put a number on it too. 
Well, we did have some numbers on what we thought the overage was going to be. Anyway, I'll make a motion to um, accept the overage okay. of the community garden. A second? I'll second that. Uh, opposed, or all those in favor? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Thank you. The last thing it says. Any acceptance? The motion is accepted. The motion is accepted. Yeah. I'm hearing, I can hear it in my head. It's, it's saying it out loud and it comes out backwards. So, okay. Um, and to, uh, yeah, do you have anything else, Pam? Or um, just? I don't think so. Just make sure it, it seems like it's all, cut, all right with you guys the way it's going along. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we have any Wildcat River or conservation easements. Wetlands. Uh, Pam, you were at the selectman meeting. Did you hear what Ann Pillian had to say about those grants? Oh, yes. Yeah. So they were trying to figure out, I guess there's some cool grant slabs off of the I'm I not think, sure where they were. they were. Were they down in a culvert or something like they that? They were from a culvert, and I, I couldn't quite tell if they had already been taken out or they were scheduled to be taken out. Or they. The, the state was saying, well, are they yours or are they the town's? And so I think somebody with Ann was, was going to do some research to see who, whether or not they were the town. She kind of felt they were the states, but the state, they thought the state would give them to them. Okay. But everybody had all these ideas as to what they could do with them. It was that they wanted them for the parking over at the old um, town hall over that way, because I guess mm -hmm. they had problems with that. And I was thinking, ooh, community garden. And I'm sure somebody else was thinking somebody else. Well, I, I, I have falls. a use. Yeah. Well, either at the falls or at the bench on the river walk where it had washed out and just using it to bring that back up to grade. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I bet you could, you could talk to Ann and just see. Okay, I, I sent an email to, to Barbara about it, but I didn't, want to, I didn't want to, so it was really interesting. It's like everybody's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Cool, cool. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know how many there were. You know. Oh, okay. Okay. I, yeah. I, and I haven't heard anything back, but I just thought, well, if they're coming to the town. Just put should. your dibs in. Yeah. Just say, can yeah. I have one? <laughs> yeah. Well, this is for the share, right? Cut them into. It's just think how hard it is to get those things moved around, though. Oh, levers and rollers. Talking is the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, somebody who knows how. That's, that's a fun good. problem. So yeah. Well. Get them, I'd say get them as close as you can, and then let it go. <laughs> <laughs> and it and it stays where it lands. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's it. Yeah. Anything else? Anything, Hank? No, nothing. All right. Motion. Motion to uh, adjourn the meeting. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. See you next month. Tom.